Hello, everyone, and welcome to UCCA Edge. I'm Philip Tenari, director of UCCA, uh, and we're here today on the eve of the opening of Liu Xiaodong, Your Friends, which is actually the first solo exhibition we've mounted at UCCA Edge and the second exhibition. Uh, this venue, our new home in Shanghai, along the banks of the Suzhou Creek here in Jing'an District, opened on May 21st of this year, and uh, we have lots of great things planned. Let's take a look at the show. So, Liu Xiaodong is an artist you may have heard of, a very key person in the history of painting in China, which is, of course, a key medium. Um, really one of the people who thought most critically about what to do with this incredible legacy of realism that comes you know, from the early 20th century and through the sort of high socialist period in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, mediated by things like Soviet instructors at the Central Academy of Fine Arts, um, and then finds a new life in the 80s as China begins to reform. Liu Xiaodong was born in 1963 in a small town uh, in Liaoning province in northeastern China, Dongbei, as we call it. Um, and he's, you know, it, it, beginning in the 90s, really started to make a lot, of, a lot of paintings that turned this lens of socialist realism, which had once been used to depict very uh, grand and grandiose kinds of topics, revolutionary topics, uh, onto, the, onto the subject matter of kind of ordinary people going about their lives in the midst of urbanization and transformation. Uh, so this exhibition takes a particular angle on Liu Xiaodong um, through three chapters. So we'll look at the first one, which is called The Anonymous Walker. And this is sort of setting the stage. Um, we see a self-portrait that he made in 2010. And then in this first gallery, what we see are key works from a, a project called Hometown Boy, which he realized in the summer of 2010 uh, by going back to the, the town of Jincheng in Liaoning, which is where he grew up, uh, and painting mainly his friends and acquaintances from early in his life. Uh, the thing about this exhibition uh, and this project of Hometown Boy is that it actually was shown at UCCA Beijing in 2010, and it was curated by my predecessor, Jerome Sons, and it stands as one of, I think, the more important exhibitions that, that we've mounted these many years. Um, so I think it's quite fun to come into this, this first room and to see, for example, this woman, his friend from, from, from childhood, who was actually the poster of the exhibition Hometown Boy when it first happened you know, in a local pool hall. Um, these two paintings on the wall here are, are dear friends from that period as well. Uh, and then he continued to, to work on this topic of his hometown in works like this one, um, which is a landscape of this same region, the same town that he made maybe a year or two later. So this is, take it as the sort of prelude. Um, this project of Hometown Boy, I think really spoke to where he was in his artistic practice around the year 2010. So there's an interesting thing you should know, which is that in about 2003, 2004, he starts to take this earlier way of painting in the studio and painting from photographs and move on site. So there's a famous project in around 2004 uh, where he goes to the construction site of the Three Gorges Dam and makes a whole series of paintings of the workers and the people who are leaving because of the rising river. Um, and this really opens a new way of working for him, and he continues to do this in places around the world. So in 2010, when he went to his hometown, it was kind of the first time that he'd taken this, this new way of working and brought it back to a place that was dear to him. Meanwhile, in the, in the following years, he's continued to go all over the world and work on, on painting projects kind of on site. Uh, most recently, for example, just before the pandemic in late 2020, he made a series of paintings on both sides of the U.S.-Mexico border uh, in Texas um, in the waning days of the Trump administration. So we really see him kind of going in a variety of directions. And that's what takes us to this next section where we, where we see him visiting uh, Chinatown. And it's not, it's not Chinatown in New York. It's actually Chinatown in Prato, in Tuscany, you know, outside of Florence, um, which is actually one of the largest production centers for luxury goods um, in Italy, and which is populated largely by, by Chinese migrants, many of whom are maybe not there uh, completely legally. Um, so this, this painting, which was just so wonderful to see hung yesterday, uh, 2016, made, uh, it's in a workshop, and it's a, it's a family or a number of families um, who are, producing, but they're taking a, a moment and, and playing mahjong kind of on the factory floor. And I think 
one thing that's so interesting about this painting, I, I, I love to think of it in, in the context of the exhibition we just finished in Beijing with Cao Fei, who's also made a lot of images of production and of work taking place by Chinese bodies in different places. Um, but I mean, look at, look at the relationships we can observe among these different sitters. Um, and think also about the, the subject position of an artist like, like Liu coming in from outside and striking up a rapport with these people. One thing that's really interesting about the, the, the Chinese community in Prato is that it exists, and he's written about this in his journals, very much behind closed doors because of the sort of precariousness of, of people's existence. So we just, again, you know, another small gallery um, with three paintings from this, this series made in, in Prato. And then we come into the, the sort of larger part of the edge space um, on, our, on our second floor, um, our double height galleries. And here we see a, a number of different things going on. And this is really, I have to talk it up to the curatorial vision of Fang Yan, who is the curator who worked on this exhibition. Um, but we see a number of, of things going on. So this is, these three paintings on this, you know, two on this wall and one on this wall are called, uh, the city's called My City, the series is called Your City. Um, and it's, it's, they're paintings of, of Beijing. Um, this one, I think, specifically is really a wonderful kind of mashup of different things um, because actually we can see the figure in the painting is Liu himself. We, he doesn't maybe want us to know that, but carrying this mattress. And this is a common scene you might have observed um, on the streets of Beijing, you know, over these last 10, 15 years as different forms of labor kind of migrate their way through the city. Um, he's, he's coming up a pedestrian overpass across a long street. We see an armored vehicle, we see taxis, we see very representative kind of buildings. Uh, we're probably on a ring road. This kind of a, a scene is, is quite, quite well known to him. Uh, but then at the same time, as we come you know, into the double height part of this space, we see actually two bodies of work. Um, one that has to do with the ongoing refugee crisis uh, that he made in, in the mid 2010s. This is, this is from 2017. Um, and he was, he was looking at the, at the refugee flows that were making their way from places like Syria and Iraq into Western Europe. Um, you know, this is, this is the time that left us with those iconically tragic images, um, you know, coming from the Mediterranean. And to juxtapose that then with this other series, which she made in, in the Bangladeshi uh, port town of Chittagong uh, in a ship breaking yard. So at the very end of the industrial life cycle of, of a ship, of a vessel, um, we, we, I think what we, what we start to see are, are just this, this really intelligent attention to different forms and modes of labor uh, and migration kind of across time and space. And I think one thing that's just so interesting about Leo Seldong, again, is this trajectory from a kind of studio-based painter to a painter who's thinking about people around him um, to one who really has this global vision um, and is able to engage with populations in different places in different ways. And in that way, it sort of performs this, this role of, of, of China in the world, uh, for lack of a better phrase. So that's our, you know, and then we, always these juxtapositions. So here we are back in Beijing, you know, um, Bangladesh, Greece, Italy, the far northeast of China surrounding us. So this is really this whole section we might think of as a kind of prelude. And I think what we're really trying to talk about is this attitude that he has where he's kind of trying to square the circle of of the painter and the painted. So how do you observe, but also maintain a kind of humble, uh, anonymous position in light of your subject? So we're gonna go up this uh, small staircase and onto the third level where we'll get deeper into the current project and the new project for this exhibition. Hopefully informed by some of what we've seen below. Now we find ourselves on level three, which is the, actually the, the smallest of the three levels of UCC Edge. Um, and the chapter presented on this level is called Lands Revisited. And the idea here, actually all of the work is made in 2020 and 2021. Um, so Leo Seldong, like so many of us, has a pandemic story. And that is that um, 
at the beginning of the pandemic, he was in the US for the project I mentioned on the Mexican border. Um, he actually keeps, he and his wife, Yu Hong, the painter, keep a, an apartment in New York. And as the world began to shut down, they decided to kind of stay. Uh, also with their daughter who'd recently finished university in the US and, and was living and working there. So he spent most of 2020 in New York um, and witnessed you know, the, height, the depths of lockdown and then uh, Black Lives Matter and other social movements that happened you know, later as the year went on, the lead up to the election. And he came back to Beijing in September of 2020, did his uh, mandatory quarantine and came out of quarantine. We actually had our first meeting about the show on October 1st of 2020. And immediately he began the project that became Your Friends, um, which I'll explain a bit more about later. But what we have on this floor is material related to both Your Friends and then to his, uh, his stay in New York during 2020. Um, and we also have an extraordinary film. And this is something really interesting about Leo Seldong's practice is that he so often collaborates with directors. Um, and that's actually integral to this idea of your friends as well, which we'll talk about. But um, you know, in, in 2010, for example, when he did Hometown Boy, we had the Taiwanese director, Ho Xiaoxian, uh, make a film about that project. Um, a collaboration with the director Jia Jiangke actually came out of the work he did in The Three Gorges and on and on and on. Really every, every project has, has a film. And recently a number of those films have made, been made by a young director called Yang Bo, uh, working with his, his sound, uh, sound capturer, uh, Shi Qian. And they made a, a film that kind of followed, commissioned actually by UCCA for this project uh, that followed uh, your friends from beginning to end. Um, so that's, that's presented here and it's 90 minutes and it will find its way into the festival circuit and elsewhere. Okay, so your friends, um, who are your friends? Actually, this, the title comes from one of his closest friends who's one of the characters in this project, uh, another film director called Zhang Yuan. And um, it's a sort of joking phrase that he used to use to, as they were working on the portrait, uh, Liu Xiaodong painting him, he would, he would talk about people they knew and said, oh, your friend so-and-so did this or that. Uh, so he decided this was like a nice title for the exhibition. Um, the, the people represented in Your Friends break into two categories. One are his friends, uh, namely three of his friends, uh, Zhang Yuan, Wang Xiaoshuai, Ah Cheng, uh, two film directors and a very important writer. And then the other uh, category of people are kind of his closest family members. So we actually see them here to begin with. Um, his older, older sister, this is his mother, uh, this is a gentleman called Yang Hua, who's very close to the family and does a lot of work with them. And this is his brother, uh, Liu Xiaochun, his older brother. So these people are going to appear again and again as we go on. And then um, as we come to like this side of the, of the gallery, we actually see here's, here's Wang Xiaoshuai, here's A Cheng. Um, you know, it's really the same five or six people appearing again and again. Um, here's a series of scenes you know, from his stay. So basically the, the trajectory was he started in October. He made his painting of Ah Cheng, which we'll see soon uh, in Beijing. And then he went to, to his, back to his hometown where he stayed for two or three months. And that's where we actually get this, this, this group of works from. Uh, the, the town is called Hei Tu Kong, which literally means uh, black earth pit, uh, black dirt pit. And it's actually the village um, where his father grew up, but his father then took the family and moved them to a slightly larger city called Jinchong, which I've mentioned, where there was a paper mill. Um, since his father has passed away, he and his brother have built a small house or taken over a small house where their mom spent some time in this village. And so in November, uh, basically late October to early December, he was, he was in this village, reconnecting with kind of local life and old friends. A number of his buddies um, actually like myself and some of our supporters of UCCA included, we made trips up there to visit him, um, really kind of try to experience kind of what was going on there. And we'll talk about this a little bit more later, but this stay for him was quite important. Then he came back to Beijing and that's when he began to paint, like for example, Zhang Yuan, who he painted in, the, in, in December. Uh, this is Ah Cheng again. Here's Wang Xiaoshuai and Zhang Yuan. So you just see these people who just appear again and again and again. Um, they're, they're, they're core people to his, his life and to his art. Uh, so just back to this theme of your friends, again, the cast of characters, Zhang Yuan, Liu Xiaodong himself, and then his wife, uh, Yu Hong. So I think we, we, on this floor and in this body of 
watercolors and sketches, we just get a really fun sense of, of him experimenting, thinking things through um, that's really gonna inform you know, what we see when we go upstairs. And then we come to this part of the gallery and actually what we have is what I talked about, the work made in New York. And a lot of these are actually, um, of this wall at least, a, a tactic he started in the, around in the early, mid 2000s, uh, where he actually paints directly onto photographs. So here he is observing you know, the empty streets of the West Village and other parts of New York, and then placing you know, people like his daughter, the artist Liu Wa, or others into these scenes and kind of creating these wonderfully hybrid compositions um, on, actually on photo paper. And then we have in the, in the, in the back, um, this really intimate body of watercolors uh, featuring you know, the people he was quarantined with, his pod, if you will, his, uh, Yu Hong and Liu Wa. Uh, walking down the street uh, in their masks, later on kind of rubbing up against protests and marches and things that were going on. Uh, there's a really beautiful um, small, small watercolor of, of, of Yu Hong uh, on the banks of the Hudson. You know, it's just so universal, this experience during the pandemic of kind of looking for some outdoor space, uh, fighting off loneliness, growing closer to the people you're already closest with. Um, especially, I think for him, you know, daughter just out of uh, out of university recently engaged. There, there they are, you know, the, the sort of typical uh, three-person family of, of of that era. You know, now kind of emerged and in another place. So it's just, I, I just, it's just such an intimate show because he's constantly processing, you know, these relationships that are the most fundamental to him. And here we have two wonderful little studies of life in in the village in Heitukong, um, which we'll 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 think more about later reading area uh, where people can kind of look at some of his older books, some still lifes of sort of autumnal uh, melons and fruits that grow in, in the Northeast at that time of year. And that's level three. Um, and so now we're gonna go up and really see, I think what people are most looking forward to in this exhibition, which is a really significant cycle of new paintings. Follow me. And here we come to uh, the, the fourth and highest level of, of UCC Edge. Uh, you'll notice the ceiling heights get a bit higher. For our opening show, um, we actually had two major video installations by William Kentridge and Lee Bull on either side. So many viewers have not actually seen this space in its more open state. Um, so we're very excited about that. The first thing you emerge on is this group portrait. It was actually the last piece he made for this exhibition, uh, which is his, his rendition of the various characters and their spouses and children who appear throughout. So we have from the left, we have uh, Zhang Yuan, uh, we have Le Sadong himself, we have Wang Xiao Shuai, uh, and we have Yu Hong and, and, and various others. But actually, you know, the place where this all begins is with this portrait right here, which is a self-portrait that he made um, actually visiting the village, we've talked about Hei Kung, in early 2020. Chinese New Year, just before uh, the pandemic was, was such a part of our lives. And this is essentially the site of his father's ancestral home. Um, it's where they returned his father's ashes after his death. The way he tells it, the day of, um, of the Chinese New Year, he was kind of walking around the village and was just kind of moved to reconnect in this extremely direct and visceral way with you know, the land that actually, in some way or another, produced him. And so um, he took a picture of himself in this state, and then he actually realized this painting in his New York apartment during a lockdown. And so we've, we've brought it back from, from the US to, uh, to Shanghai here. Um, and that was kind of, I think, a way of setting the tone, but you, you see so much going on. I mean, that, that persists throughout the series, especially this, you know, this kind of, in every one of these paintings, it's, I, it's always about the subject and the setting and the kind of dialogue between the two. Um, which is different from the things we saw downstairs where he's in more of a repertorial mood or mode um, and really kind of researching and internalizing as he goes along. These are all places and people that he knows just so viscerally well um, that he can really do interesting things. And so I think, you know, there's a lot of work being done by, for example, these um, of dead sunflowers, right? I mean, uh, so much of this project, he, at one point, you know, one of the joking perhaps titles of the exhibition was homage to middle-aged and old people. Um, so he's thinking a lot about, you know, how these relationships of his that began when he was kind of a very young man have, have followed him 
um, you know, here he is uh, facing, um, facing his 60th birthday in, in a year or two um, and thinking about, you know, transitions in his own life. So anyway, that's, that's sort of our starting point. Um, and then when he began painting in earnest for this project in, in October of, of 2020, the first person he turned to uh, was Ah Chung. Now Ah Chung is an extremely well-known uh, novelist and short story writer of like kind of emerged in the post-cultural revolution period. Some very important works from the, from the 80s that are known to educated people in China. Um, he lives uh, north of Beijing um, in a neighborhood and a kind of compound with a, a number of other artists. You know, very, you see very typical things like these gray brick walls, uh, this vegetation. Also, again, you know, it's late autumn, uh, autumn of, this, of the year, autumn of, of the subject's life. Um, really just trying to, to capture, you know, someone who's meant so much to him uh, as an artistic and literary companion in, this, in, his, in his current um, state. I was actually really lucky to have a chance to watch him for a day as he was making this painting and just to see all the decisions that go into, you know, the, the very subtle and sometimes seemingly ordinary. I mean, the day I was there, he spent a lot of time on this blue outdoor uh, carpet. Um, this painting finished in, in December of 2020 of Zhang Yuan, uh, a little bit different. You know, he lives actually not, not too far from me in Beijing in a neighborhood called Xingfu Artsun. And there we are. There he is in his in his living room, a very normal, modest apartment, on a couch, uh, glass of whiskey, you know, wearing his um, his flip flops and his 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 t-shirt. You know, the darkest part of the year, he would come maybe start around noon each day and only be able to paint to about four o'clock. Uh, you also see, you know, the can obvious things. The canvas is smaller because it's the size one could get in and out of the door of the apartment. Um, And then as we go on, we have Wang Xiaoshuai, another um, quite important director of the so-called sixth generation of, of filmmakers. In his early days, Liu Xiaodong actually featured in, in one of Wang Xiaoshuai's original uh, films. So there's an ongoing dialogue. He's again in an artist district of Beijing called uh, Tao Changdi, and he's got his outdoor fire pit. He's got his cat. He's got his office chair, um, kind of looking out on life. And this was this was realized in early 2021, um, as as winter was starting to turn to spring. And then we kind of turn this corner, or, or, or aim to turn the corner. Note the wonderful view of the uh, of the Shanghai skyline through the window. And this cluster here is, we're getting into uh, Hei Kong into the village. You know, this painting very much in parallel with the one we saw at the top of the stairs. This is the sort of cast of characters back at home. Um, at the center of, of the action, his mother uh, at the top there fixing a, a light post. We have his, his brother. Um, we have a, a, a good friend of the family called Xu Zi, who's not, um, who's, who he didn't paint a new, for this cycle, but who actually appeared downstairs. We, we saw him when we first entered. And Yang Hua, who's actually the gentleman who appears in this painting. Um, there they are, early spring, um, back in the village on his second trip and second stay there as he was preparing. And so this was, again, one of the last paintings that he made. And then this is, I just think, a piece of such great sentiment. This is his brother. Um, and it's just so interesting because, you know, he went on, Liu Sedong obviously came to Beijing as a very young man, as a high school student, and became this well-known painter uh, with this international career. And, and his brother is, is super present uh, in the life of, of this local community. Um, but, but he's still the older brother. And so there's just a, a wonderful dialogue and um, rapport and love between the two. Uh, that was a really wonderful thing to be able to witness on our trip there. Um, so when, when Liu Xiaodong went back uh, in the early part of this year, oh sorry, late part of last year uh, to, to the village, one thing that they did, and, and that's depicted very beautifully in the, in the film, is next to this house, this little, this is the farmhouse where, where he stays when he's up there. Um, and just to the right there, kind of in the backyard, they built this outdoor studio um, on the foundation of an old shed 
and they took all these kind of stone pillars from different other farmhouses and erected them. It reminds me of like remains of Byzantine churches that you find, you know, traveling through the countryside of you know various Mediterranean places. Um, and very theatrical, and he he could put his easel there. Uh, you know, he has his brother leaning against one of these columns that he helped to erect, holding an ear of corn. Um, and there's in, in the film, there's just this wonderful scene of him making this, this painting of his brother, who he says he, he actually had never really uh, diligently painted before, and kind of just going back and forth, discussing, you know, whether it really looks like him, uh, and so on. And then, you know, one thing that's really interesting about this, although is he, he loves to write and document his process. So what we have here is a journal that tells us the whole story of, of this creation. And it's very specific. I mean, he's talking about just like what happened that day, how, how it went, um, who he met with, what they decided uh, day by day by day by day. And we've, this will all be included in the catalog that we publish. Uh, it's also in a translated handout that people can pick up along the side. But you see him going from, you know, more like inscriptions to just notes to some sketches and so on. And you really see the project continue to come together. You know, here's, here's the preparatory sketches for his painting of his mother um, and so on. And then as we come uh, into the next part of the gallery, uh, in this corner, we see this really wonderful juxtaposition. On the one hand, this painting that he made of Yu Hong and Liu Hua, his wife and daughter, in their New York apartment, kind of during the pandemic, uh, August the 12th, 2020. And then it's, it's counterposed with, with this painting, uh, which he made of Yu Hong 20 years earlier in, in the year 2000. Um, and so, I mean, this is it's really the most intimate section of the show where we see, you know, these two people who are so close to him. And then we'll just look at the last two paintings in the exhibition. Um, the two most important women in his life, his wife and his mother, um, who I think kind of beautifully occupy this, this corner um, set against each other. Yu Hong, early spring in the courtyard of their shared studio building, which is in the 798 Art District, very close to UCCA actually. Um, I love this uh, holding the, the pruning shears. Not sure exactly what the metaphor is, but um, we can think. Uh, in front of this old computer on this table with this small statue um, against this red brick wall. And then here we have his mother, who's just, um, you know, his, his bedrock and, and just such an important person in, in, on the terrace of this farmhouse in the autumn light. She's nearing 90 still a very active smoker, um, loves to cook, uh, is constantly kind of out in the fields uh, gathering peanuts and, and whatever is in season. Um, so we just really have her kind of in her, in her element, um, being herself. Anyway, this is, uh, I just think it's a really poignant show. I mean, I think it's something about this, this mode of painting that he's explored and uh, tested in so many different ways over the last few decades, but then finally brought to bear on really his nearest and dearest. So we strip away this layer of why this subject at this moment uh, and really get down to some very basic questions about art and artists as interfaces among people and vehicles for, uh, for relationships and for sentiments um, and for histories. Anyway, um, thank you for, for joining us on this virtual tour. Uh, let's just get one last. You can see kind of how, how the exhibition loops around. Um, and we're sort of back where we started. Anyway, if you have a chance to visit Shanghai before October 10th, uh, please come check these out in the flesh. Um, and if not, uh, thank you for, for being with us here today.